Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. On today's show, we are discussing the causes and effects of teenage pregnancies. Okay, um, please get in touch. You've got the number on the screen. Uh, first segment, we spoke about all the causes. We're going to look at the effects now. I'm going to ask you about teenage pregnancy. I'm going to ask you about the teenage pregnancy. I'm going to ask you about the teenage pregnancy. I'm going to ask you about the teenage pregnancy. I'm going to ask you about the Family of the Tatar, Grotak Parde, Naro Hototo Yazai, so Afnara Iktar Hota Luya Kitabuzoin, Afnara Ilazano Nila Manusho Ruise, Kitatara Horso, and Octa Luyafnara, please, Shorikuiba. Um, on the panel, I'm delighted to uh, welcome onto the show uh, Abul Hasnat, who's a youth manager and a presenter himself. So uh, thanks for coming on the show. And we still have uh, Naila and Rahma uh, on the show as well. So thank you. Um, just going, to, carrying on with the discussion that we've been speaking about. Uh, as, as not, I'll start with you. Uh, with regards to CSE, sometimes you know, as a community, I think uh, this is something that it's slowly but surely it's getting the recognition it deserves. But do you feel that parents are aware of this? What's your view on that? Um, parent awareness is, is, is the difficulty behind it. Is, is the culture? I mean, if we if we look at um, uh, forgive me for taking probably a step back, but if we look at the um, UK as a nation, I mean, back in '97 when the Labour government came on, they had this big drive: education, education, education. Everybody heard Tony Blair going on, and then he put in they put in a manifesto back in '99 about how to reduce teenage pregnancy. So, as a country, UK going from 1999 coming right up to, and I'm talking March 2017 when ONS the official na national statistics released, they actually reduced teenage pregnancy by 49.7% or so. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what it roughly was. It was in the independent when I saw it. So um, nationally it's gone well and I think this is where it's eased off. However, now if we take the perspective of looking at the ethnic minorities and in specific, um, you'll, probably, you'll probably find articles on the internet relating to Pakistani and Bangladeshi teenagers. Um, it's 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 actually risen for them, and I mean, obviously, we can relate uh, during our times on on on, on how that's risen. And um, sorry, I've, I've probably going Thank off the you. topic has probably made no, me disappear fine. from your question. But um, as I mean, that that's a perspective that I looked, at. and and, and it, it goes back down to culture and the taboo Thank of you. having these discussions. Okay, thank you for that. Um, we're going to watch a video now on uh, a victim's perspective on how it feels to be a victim of CSE. So uh, do stay with us. I was 14 years old and I met him through a friend outside a children's home. He made me feel special. He made me feel like he cared for me. He was never violent. He was caring and loving. He used alcohol. We used to get drunk quite a lot and smoke cannabis, but he would never drink himself, but he would smoke cannabis. I was 14 years old. I didn't have any money, he always had money, he would buy the drink, he would buy the drugs. It was a few months down the line, there would be parties at his, and there would be other men there. There would be dancing, and his friends would get a bit touchy, and I'd look to him to say, you know, stop it. Then he would come up to me and say, come on, if you love me, come on, make them happy. At first... I, I generally didn't want to do it, but <laughs> I'd get so drunk, I, I don't think I knew what was going on sometimes. And I loved him. I wanted to make him happy. I didn't regard it as abuse back then. I thought he loved me. I, I originally went forward about the first case, but I got scared and I dropped out. And the police approached me again about Tilau. And because I have children of my own, I thought it was the right thing to do. It makes my skin crawl that I saw him, a picture of him when I had to, you know, do the face recognition thing. And it made me feel sick. Well, it's not your fault and you should come forward and talk because there are people now that will do something about it. Back then, it happened a lot and nothing was done. But now, it's all going to change. I'm closer with my family more more than ever now, but I don't have a lot of friends. I don't trust anyone. I, I'll never be able to have a normal relationship again. I can't. I can't be with anyone. I've tried and I just can't. I'm just happy with my children now. 
So that was a short video of a victim speaking about her experiences of, uh, you know, uh, getting involved with someone who who was drunk and gave her drugs. And uh, this, you know, ties in obviously with what we're talking about today. And once again, you know, we want to hear from you. Do you know anyone who's experienced something similar to this? And how did they deal with it? Or what have they done? Or what have they not done and should have done? And what have been those consequences? Uh, Naila, coming back to you. Um, so. You know, the victim spoke about the effect of drugs and alcohol, how that was pushed onto them. What would you say to girls who are watching this, who might be in a relationship with someone who drinks or does drugs? I'd say if you're not comfortable with something, then stand up for what you believe in. Don't try and not be convinced with, by somebody else. And if there is something you're not com comfortable with, then again, talk to someone, talk to your friends, talk to a teacher, find out more. Even there's anonymous helplines you can call. Childline, talk to Frank and find out more about what's going on and then decide for yourself. You, you have to be confident in yourself that you're not going to be pressured into something by someone else. Sure, thank you. Um, Rahma, you know, there's cases that you hear about where some people get groomed online and then that has also led to uh, them then getting pregnant. Yes. Um, but, but, you know, how, how do we try and explain this to our parents and our community watching this? It is a very difficult thing to explain to the parents and it's very difficult to even believe that it, how often it happens and that it can happen to anyone. Sure. Um, Rama, can I just come back to you because I know we've got a caller okay. uh, who's actually from the Teens Against Grooming uh, organization. So we'll take that call. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. Okay, I think it's not for Hello. teens against. Yes, yeah. Salaam Alaikum, sister. Boin Khoka. Alaikum Salaam. Oh, studio at Matramni. Joy, Boin Khoka, I've never heard that. Hello. Joy, I've never TV volume. Uh, how many years? I've never heard that. Boin. I'm a very how many. Joy, Joy, Khoka, I've never. Uh, class already heard that. Sorry, what the? It's a program we have with them. Joy. So then, it's a. There are some program for that. Joy. মানে <laughs> যদি মাও বালো এনার বাপও বাদ হয়ে যায় এই ধরনের জিনিস করব তো মানে এটা নিয়া আলোচনা করাটা ঠিক বাদ মনে করলাম না বালো করলাম আর ও দেশের কালচার সেই করিলাই এ লাগি চাই কি যে কইরা যে শরীর hopefully better. I, I haven't got the TV on. Okay. Um, <laughs> so even better. Okay, so thank you okay. for joining us on the show. Now, you obviously work for an organization called uh, Teens Against Grooming. Correct, yeah. Correct. And, uh, you know, we've just come on to, in fact, speaking about this very thing. And, you know, just tell us a bit about, you know, what the national picture looks like with regards to uh, grooming. Okay. Yeah, okay. You ready for me to go, yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, the... The issue of child sex exploitation is significant in this country. The scale is nobody can put a number on it, but we know it's substantial from a number of cases that have hit the hit the media, hit the headlines over the last few years. So, for example, uh, we know in the Rotherham case there was two major inquiries, and uh, what they were able to quantify that there were approximately 1,400 victims over a period of um, 10 to 12 years. Uh, we know some um, figures have been re released by the police that they um, uh, estimate that the 50,000 um, people who have sexual images of children 
uh, on their on their PCs or on their uh, devices. Uh, so all these are indicators of the scale of the problems. So the scale of the problem uh, from that I can say is quite quite sure. substantial. And what would you what would you say uh, we need to do as a community to try and tackle this? Because obviously you've got a lot of you know members in our community, Beng- Bengali Bangladeshi community, where you know they might be illiterate, they might not be IT savvy. Sure. So how do we tackle the issue? Yeah, I mean that that's one of the, uh, the reasons why we why we exist because. Uh, not just the Asian, Bangladeshi, Pakistani communities, not just those where there's a lack of awareness. Uh, I think there's a lack of awareness generally or mis- a, mis- a misapprehension. Uh, so the things that we do is we go around, we do media appearances, we talk to community groups, uh, we talk to young people. And it's all about things that parents can do uh, to be to be aware of this issue in terms of what sort of relationship they should have with their children, what preventative measures they can take, what are the signs that a young person is maybe uh, being groomed or um, or being prepared for child sexual exploitation, all of those those things. So, so it, what parents need to do is to uh, basically um, get themselves educated on this issue. Now, it's particularly your right to raise this issue from a point of view of the kind of Bangladeshi Asian community because because of the media um, kind of view or perception that's been presented is one that this is typically um, Asian uh, perpetrators and white girls. And the official figures will, to some extent, back that up. But the reality, and there's been some studies in this area, shows that there are are a significant number of Asian uh, young people. Now, I say young people because mm-hmm. another uh, misapprehension is that just ter- just girls are the victims, girls are targeted. But in fact, a significant number of boys are targeted. Sure. Also. And, and, my, and my last question is, uh, Brother Ansar, in terms of, um, with regards to what we're talking about, how, how often is this happening? You know, and what do we need to, you know, what, what would be your final kind of brief message to parents who are watching this right now? And well, as, as I said in the answer to my first question, it's a, it's a significant issue. Um, many, many parents kind of reassure themselves with uh, thinking that it's going to happen to somebody else, it'll never happen to us. But we uh, come across so many parents that, ha- you know, we go and do radio shows and people ring in and say they've, they've been subjected. So I think to be prepared is best. That's what we uh, tell parents. And the advice that we give parents is um, that they need to have a very strong, open and trusting relationship with their child. So if their child uh, has any issues, has any concerns, then they can come and talk to them. Brilliant. Thank you for Uh, uh, calling in and, you know taking your time to discuss this very important issue with us and and you know if there are parents who are concerned about online grooming you know if you go onto the teen against um, grooming website you know there's a uh, frequently asked questions there that can help you um, come back to you uh, Rahma you were t- we were talking about this uh, about how it can then lead to someone being groomed and then becoming pregnant so yeah. carry um, on with your answer please I think when it first happens, that's the most crucial time that we notice these signs and we do something about it. Because by the time that the groomer has managed to get into the mind of that young person, they are like a brick wall. They will not listen to you. Pregnancy is one of the things that happen, but it's not always what the groomer wants. So if a young person has been groomed into this kind of lifestyle where they feel like this is their support, this is their family even, so they end up getting pregnant. A groomer will, in a personal case that I have been supporting a young person, the groomer will offer alternatives like maybe you should get rid of it, maybe you should give it away. They don't want the child because the, they are actually using that young person, not just sexually, but also for money. By Um, exposing this young person into a life where there is drugs, drinks and sex. That's exactly what happens. But they make money from that young person and they're not aware. And if if, once it's established, you literally cannot get through. Mm -hmm. You can become the best support, but at that time it's too late. So it really needs to start at the beginning if you suspect that your child might be getting influenced in ways that you're not comfortable with. If you suspect that they're in a relationship you can 
you you need to be aware you need to be always aware of what your kids actions are and watch out for the behaviors because that's the first indicators you will see that your child will change mm. just slightly sometimes but you will know something won't sit right with you as a parent investigate find out because once somebody's got control of their mind like that it's too late they might they will not most of the time like uh, like with the rate of abuse with the groomers that statistics is what the people that have come forward most of the time the young person that's being groomed will never come forward they believe that's their family that's their support so rahma there might be you know kids who are watching this right now who are being groomed and our parents watching with them aren't yeah. aware of that yeah so what would you say you know what would you say to um, our parents who are watching this and the young people who are watching this who hopefully hasn't got to that stage where they've got total control over their mind i'd say to the young person that if they are listening to what I'm saying and something is you know inside them that's telling them maybe they are in this situation talk to your family if it's not your family that you can talk to talk to a friend reach out for these different organizations that can give you support but you need to get yourself out of there as soon as possible before you fall into deep and as to the parent be supportive of your child let them be comfortable to come to you maybe ask them now is the time if you've just the first time yeah. you've heard about this issue you've heard about it talk to your child just ask questions like how are you how's you know school and maybe how, you haven't had that conversation how with important your child for is it Rahmat, for parents to actually say look if there is something wrong yeah. then it's okay you know we can talk about it and we can deal with it how important and how reassuring is that to a child it's not always reassuring because sometimes a parent wants to get to the bottom of something that you've done. No, but you know, at least the fact that they're trying to understand. You know how obviously the child will not, you'd lo you know, is less likely to open up to a parent. So I guess we're just trying to find there an are other angle. Ways. How, you can get a, so can how get, what would you advise? If the parent can't get through to their child, there's usually somebody, whether it's within the family structure, whether it's a friend that the child is more close to and more likely to open up, then use that let the child talk to someone else you know that is confidential but you'll be aware and you'll be able to take action mm. so don't be upset if your child doesn't talk to you and tells you what's happening in their life it's quite normal with young people they won't always be open sure. with the parents sure so whatever support thank that is there use it thank you and uh, you know just carrying on from that i think regardless of whether you doubt your child or not i think it's important to have that conversation because you know through that you might find something that might end up supporting your child in the long run um we're going to go for a break but when we come back we'll carry on and we'll talk about preventative measures and what we need to do as a community to try and protect those we love so do stay with us